Fix this screen here. All right, good morning. Ms. Clement, could you unmute your microphone, please? Got it. You got it. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, ma'am. Would you introduce yourself? Tell us your name and what is your current mailing address, please? My name is Emily Sue Bryant Clement, and my married name now is Pollard. Mailing address is Post Office Box One Nine. Alaska. AK nine nine six one one. N E Y Avenue, Tina K E N A I, Alaska nine nine six one one. Great, thank you, ma'am. Good morning, and you have counsel here who's here with us in Baton Rouge this morning. Council, would you introduce yourself for the record? Good morning, my name is Hillary, and it's an honor to appear before you once again. Sir, thank you. So, uh, Ms. Clement, let me, uh, I'll read some identifying information into the record, uh, after which we'll conduct an interview with you. Um, <clears throat> we also have some folks who are here um, this morning, uh, in opposition, we have Han Funk, Tanya Monroe, James Pujol, Susan Moses, Wendy Funk, Joseph Fontenot, Laura Yomer. Some of those folks are here with us in Baton Rouge and some who have joined us by, uh, by YouTube, I mean by Zoom. Here in support uh, by Zoom, we have Emily Clement, your husband, Mr. Pollard, and of course your attorney uh, and Ms. Clint, uh, your husband wants to speak on your behalf. We'll call on him at the appropriate time to do so. Yes, sir. Uh, and you'll be allowed to make a statement before we turn it over to your attorney for his presentation and close out for us. Okay, you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right. So, uh, Emily Clement, your DOC number is 509 727. You're seeking a pardon with restoration of firearms. You were sentenced uh, September 15, 2006 in Calcasieu Parish to 10 years uh, for the offense solicitation of murder. Is that information correct? Yes, ma'am. Your case this morning has been assigned to Mrs. Bonnie Jackson. Would you answer her questions, please? Yes, ma'am. Morning, Ms. Clement. Good morning. What time is it where you are? Oh, we're three hours behind you. <laughs> so uh, let's see the time here is behind us. Yeah. 6.05 a.m. Okay, so 6.05. All right, well, Ms. Clement, um, I've reviewed your application. I, I would like for you to first Tell us a little bit about why you ended up in prison on a 10 year sentence. What happened in this case? Uh, I was married to a doctor, a physician, OBGYN, 
and I befriended a lady, uh, Neely McDaniel, and she was one of the witnesses that went against me in the case. What did you, uh, what did you do, uh, Ms. Toynbee, to get you in prison? What did you do? I, I, I didn't do anything. I am totally innocent of the charges against me. Uh, it was an issue wherein I believe my late husband, who has passed now, was very, very ill. I was taking care of him, and I, I believe the issue was about money and wanting to acquire our state, which they were successful in doing. Well, Ms. Clinton, the information that I have is because of the lawsuit against your husband, uh, it was alleged that you um, asked uh, Ms. Uh, Ely Kay who might be able to uh, kill the plaintiff in the lawsuit. You indicated that uh, you would pay them uh, $5,000 or and you agreed to do that. Uh, at some point in time, you were found with a large sum of cash in your purse, almost $8,000. Also, 16 photographs of the intended victim and two sheriff's office badges. Could you explain to us the $7,772 the 16 photographs of the intended victim and two um, sheriff's badges. Could you explain to us why you have those items in your possession? The money in my purse I carried with me uh, per my husband's request. He was very ill with cancer and Alzheimer's and we were always traveling to Houston, Texas to go to the doctors and he always believed in having cash on him. Um, I don't drive over to Houston. Um, I know, but that's, I, I that's those, what I made that's those what, to MD Anderson as well. And I don't think that you actually would need almost $8,000 to make a trip <laughs> to Houston. Well, tell me why you had 16 photographs of uh, the intended victim in this case in your purse. I do not remember that. I'm sorry. Well, what about not... what about the two sheriff's office badges? I I remember at one point I was a deputy marshal for Richard Gilry, but that was many, many, many years ago. Wow. And the badges in your possession. I don't remember that, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh, well, tell us, Ms. Clement, um, you, you went to trial, is that correct? Trial by judge, yes, ma'am. And uh, the judge heard the evidence, and he convicted you of the offense, and right. actually sentenced you to 10 years in prison, is that correct? That is correct. Now, one of the statements that you made in your application was that the judge profited from sending you to prison. Could you explain to me what you meant by that? Uh, that was not my sentencing judge. Uh, I was of the opinion uh, there was a judge, uh, um, David Kent Savoy, that was over my case, uh, or that I heard the lawsuit part of the case against my husband. And he and my husband never got along at all, even prior to this. Um, and and what, I way, just, what way did you think the judge profited from, you said in your statement, he profited from sending you to prison. So a civil court judge couldn't have sent you to prison. It would have been the trial judge. But how, how did you figure any judge profited from doing anything in your case? I, 
Judge Savoy and my late husband just did not get along, and he is now a court of appeals judge, I believe, if I remember correctly. And uh, for some reason, my husband at that point had had a heart attack, and was his lawyer was to appear in court for him, and that judge that was over that case for Mrs. Funk sent the sheriff's department to retrieve my husband from bed at home. And that judge put my husband in the back of the courtroom in a, a cell in a jail and held him there after he'd had a heart attack. But then he eventually let him go home. And I, I just don't, I don't understand that. And I never will. He was medically ill. He was had a heart attack. And, and, and thank, thank you. Uh, okay. So, today, why do you think you need a pardon? I why can't you hear ask, you. Why are you asking for a pardon? Because I would like to travel with my present husband. And for us to travel through Canada, the country of Canada, you have to have no record whatsoever, no felonies, and we would like to travel. Um, my present husband has had, an, you know, four, four heart attacks, and he's not well at this point, but we're trying to get better and do a little bit of traveling while we have time. There are a lot of places you can go besides Canada. Uh, to travel down through the Alcan, I'm in Alaska. I'm above <laughs> Canada. And how, how, I, did you, how did you get to Canada? You went to Canada after you were a convicted felon. So how did you get to Canada? No, ma'am, I did not ever go to Canada. I'm, I'm in Alaska. How I did flew. You get I flew airplane. And that didn't prevent your conviction, didn't prevent you from flying to Alaska, did it? No, ma'am, because my parole officer at the time approved for me to fly. I, I, came, I came here and then I went back to Louisiana as instructed. Right, what I'm saying is if you wanted to leave Alaska, you can leave Alaska. You might not be able to uh, go to Canada, but you can leave Alaska. There are a lot of other places in the United States you can visit. Certainly, but I can't travel with an RV. <laughs> I can't travel through Canada. We wanted to travel. Well, all right. Thank you, Miss. That's, that's all I have. Okay. Yes. See no other questions. So uh, we have your your husband would like to speak on your behalf. We hear from Mr. Pollard. Yes, ma'am, he's right here. This is Freddie Pollard. Yes, sir. Good morning. What would you like us to? Go ahead, Pardon? sir. Go ahead. Tell us what you want us to know. Well, I'm, I was uh, just wanting to tell you that, uh, you know, Emily's been a, a perfect citizen ever since we've been married and live up here in Alaska with me. And, and, and I just wanted to say that, you know, I'm here for her. And if we can, if I can do anything for her or for you guys, answer any questions, I'd be glad to. All right, I don't see any questions by the board. We appreciate you uh, getting up early to speak with us. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, Ms. Clement, is there something you'd like to say to us before we turn it over to your attorney? I just really, I'm 66 years old and I'm had one heart attack, have stents in my heart, and I just really, I'm just so sorry all of this has ever even occurred. 
I don't know what to say to make anybody really believe me other than to refer anybody to the polygraph test I took and I passed it. Um, I would never intend to harm anybody in my life ever. And I'm so sorry that Miss Funk has had to endure this type of situation in her life. I just, I can't imagine what she has gone through. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Uh, Mr. Gilroy? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for this opportunity to speak on behalf of Ms. Clement. Ms. Clement has always blamed her innocence. There was no jury trial in this case. People in my profession are very concerned about non-unanimous jurors and those verdicts that send people to prison for long time. In this case, I'll very quickly point out that I was not the attorney representing her. This case was permitted to go to a judge alone and no jury heard this matter. She was a zero prior offender. Never gotten into any kind of trouble, not even a traffic violation. <laughs> Since this matter has occurred, she has been an absolute trouble free. I would point out that when I became involved in 2015, Listening to her proclamations of her innocence, I contact the Louisiana Police's polygraph expert and her and have her submit to a polygraph by that man. And it came back that she was totally telling the truth that she was in fact innocent. He served almost a decade in prison. She is married, uh, very stable in existence. She's a person of means. She will not be a burden on government or on any other person. Should she receive this part? It's a difficult thing for a man to talk about a lady's age, where she is um, of advanced maturity and does have some significant health issues. I discussed this case with Mr. DeRosier, who was the district attorney in Calvary Parish. He has no opposition to this request and uh, has indicated to me that he was making clear that he did not have any opposition. She was a model prisoner. She's been, um, she was a model parolee. She's a model citizen right now. In this matter, she lost her home and her vehicles while she was in prison. Mysteriously, all of those things just kind of disappeared into the legal system. They're gone. She served 10 years despite her innocence. This has been a long road to justice for me. I've been representing her since 2015. She would like to have her record clean. She would like to be able to drive in the comfort of an RV from her native home in Louisiana to her present home in Alaska. She cannot do that without a car. Because of the felony, she cannot travel through Canada. She really has not said it, but on her behalf, I ask for vindication. She has gone through all of this, proven her innocence to the, to the polygraph expert. And I believe mean, she deserves the vindication of her, and so that she can live the rest of her life. Peace. 
Thank you for letting me be here with you this morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. This is Jackson. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Clement. Yeah, I've looked at this case very, I've looked at this case very close. Uh, you had a judge trial because you and your attorney chose a judge trial. You had every right to have a jury trial, but for whatever strategic reasons the attorney felt and you felt that it was better for you to waive your right to a jury trial and have the judge alone try the case. Uh, polygraphs are inadmissible, uh, both to prove guilt or to prove innocence. A polygraph is just cool but it is not uh, admissible in any court of law and in this state. And to be honest with you, Ms. Clement, I just think you've, been, you've not been very candid with this court, I mean, with this board. You uh, had pictures, 16 pictures of the intended victim in your house. You had $7,772 in your possession. You had two sheriff's office badges in your possession. The person that you solicited to commit the crime, uh, once that happened, went to his attorney and said, look, this lady is trying to get me to kill somebody. And what should I do? And law enforcement was alerted about the situation. There's also an indication that you personally showed up at the victim's house in the driveway. And so there was a lot of evidence that would indicate that despite the polygraph and despite your search here today, that you did uh, do the crime that you were charged with committees. Um, so really because of your lack of candor, because of victim opposition, and because I don't think you've shown any uh, compelling reason for needing a pardon, um, my vote today would be to deny Ms. Clement. Mr. Rush. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good morning, Ms. Clement. Uh, Ms. Clement. My criteria for granting a pardon with the restoration of firearms or a pardon without firearms is a need to make advancements in employment. You have no employment need. Uh, some people need a pardon because of immigration needs. You have no immigration need. Some individuals need a pardon to be licensed in a professional area. You have no licensing need. And lastly, you have no need to possess a firearm. Therefore, I'm going to deny your request. Mr. Maribel. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Ms. Clement, I, I agree with. Uh, Judge Jackson, uh, I, I don't think you've been very candid with us today. Uh, you, you have an absolute right to protest your innocence and to exert your innocence, even after conviction. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, for some reason, what you need to do. But the evidence to us appears to be to the contrary. And, and I, I, I don't think you've been candid with us here today. Uh, so my vote, likewise, is to deny. Mr. Friedman? Uh, I agree. My vote is to deny. All right, Ms. Clement, you've received four <laughs> votes to deny your application this morning. So today, your application for uh, a pardon with restoration of firearms has been denied. Thank you. Man, this one was... It's kind of funny. Maybe you'd be sad if it wasn't so funny. I don't know. 
I, the only thing we're missing is her name isn't Karen. I, I'm sorry. And, and I don't know if I'm going to be attacked with this one, but uh, what alternate universe is she living on? There's news articles of this and everything. Basically, her previous husband, who was a doctor, was injecting this woman with male hormones um, or hormones and like messing her up for years. And she sued him and won. And uh, yeah, she was caught hiring someone who had just gotten out of prison to go and whack her. And she's caught with all that money, um, 16 pictures of the victim, the two badges. Um, and she's just like, oh, uh, when they're talking about it, she's like, oh, I don't know what you're talking I don't remember any of that. It's like, <laughs> you know what? You can say you're innocent, but, but please. Um, wow, <clears throat> you can be living in a la, la land too. And it's like, well, we, we want to travel um, and we can't travel through Canada. And like, well, you, you got there before. Oh no, we don't, we don't want to fly. You see, we want to take our motor home to Louisiana because we want to travel. I Google mapped it. It's a minimum of 4,350 miles. Yeah. So her husband who's suffering like heart attacks every other day and their health, they're going to both sit in a motor home and drive for minimum of 4,350 miles, depending where they are in Alaska. It could easily be like double that. Well, not double, but a lot more. Um, that was, yeah, I don't believe it for a second that they intend on getting into a motorhome and traveling through Canada. I don't believe it for you have all of Alaska. You want to go in a motorhome? You got beautiful Alaska. Drive around in Alaska, okay? Um, she obviously just has some type of vendetta. Uh, believes in her mind she's innocent um, and wants the pardon. That's my belief and the idea that she thought she could show up and just like and have the board not have done any research and then and then her her entire strategy her entire attack plan was to just be like i i don't know um what you're talking about with those 16 fo 16 photos no oh the the badges no i don't know badges but the cash yeah, yeah I'll, I'll admit to the cash you know my husband always wanted me to carry around cash in my purse it's just you know we had to drive uh, to texas so you, you don't you never know gas prices can go might might need to buy a lot of um you know a lot of gas Like I know people carry a thousand bucks in their wallet. Like I know people that like to have cash in their wallet, but 16, was it 16,000 or 8,000? I'm getting confused. 16 pictures, $7,772. Um, but I also thought it was $16,000 that they said there. Anyways, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'll put the news articles to the description. It's funny that it's interesting. I, I don't even believe her that the DA, assistant DA, told her that uh, or told the attorney that he was okay with it. I don't believe that. And then, um, you know, he would have had a letter, if anything. He just said it. His attorney said it. Her attorney said it, but there's no letter. And then the lie detector test. Yeah, okay. Actually, lie detector test. You know the inventor of the lie detector test? The inventor of it himself, I forget the exact words, but he he said that it's a gimmick. He um, he 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 thinks it's like a travesty that it's that it's used, and I'm all with it. The lie detector test is a useful tool because of the person. This is my belief because of the person who is giving the lie detector test can say whatever they want and get someone scared to admit guilt. But the idea of it scientifically working is bogus my opinion and a lot of people's opinion and the, the research including the inventor of it himself um so it's just it's just kind of funny and there's a reason it's not admissible in court um yeah this to me was a pretty funny case but the victim was terrified of her anyways who wouldn't i would be too but with that good I'll morning the pardon board is convening now at Rainer Center.